the state of New Jersey came to us and said, congratulations, you have a bald eagle's nest right in the middle of the island. Things got interesting in a hurry. Sitco approached the state of New Jersey and they started to negotiate a conservation easement and an ultimate land transfer. We knew it was going to be controversial because there was a high-end development proposed for the island. They had donated something like one and a half million dollars to various political entities and individuals. And I didn't realize that the fix was in. The developer, Cherokee, hired a consultant to figure out how much disturbance the eagles could tolerate. A baby eaglet was found lying on the service road, broken tail, covered in maggots. That got people riled up and, and really angry. Environmentalists got on board, the public got on board. When you are a champion of nature, you can win and you do win. And when you can win and you do win, you not only enhance the natural world, but you enhance your own life. Petty's Island is really special because it's uh, such a large piece of semi-natural habitat along a great river, the Delaware River, in between two gigantic cities. Petty's Island is 340 acres, but it also has 150 acres of riparian land that provide incredible habitat for migratory birds. So together it's almost 500 acres of natural area. Um, try to find 500 acres of natural area in any other urban part of New Jersey, and it's virtually impossible. Because of migration along the river, the flyway, there's going to be all sorts of waterfowl, eagles, hawks. It's a tremendous place to go bird watching, especially during spring and fall migration. It makes for great eagle habitat. It makes for great habitat for a lot of other wildlife. There's already a, a heronry that's on the south end. Uh, there's been nesting kestrels here. There's been some grassland birds show up. There's birds that use wetlands. There's already a turkey flock walking around here. So you've got a mosaic of habitats surrounded on one side by a back channel and on the river side um, by a swift moving river channel. So you've got pretty much every habitat, including some inland ponds uh, that you could find in that part of New Jersey. It's like a library of all the, the plants, the wildlife, 200 species of birds. When you walk down that trail, the trees couple over and create this here like a tunnel. And then you get to a certain area, then it opens up and you can see the shoreline. And then when you go all the way down to the end, it's, 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 it's a real stunning view. This 400 acre open space is, is directly located between some uh, communities that have some serious environmental justice and economic uh, distressed areas. And this is going to be a type of oasis of open space, of wildlife habitat, of tranquility and peace, uh, of an outdoor classroom, giving, giving teachers an opportunity to bring their students over here and to observe and learn and get them, get kids' imaginations flowing. And we've seen that. Those programs are already underway. The history of the Native Americans that occupied this land and what they did and how they hunt and where they lived at, you know. So there's a story that, that, that can be told. It's a special and unique place. Once Sitco was no longer operational here and started to look to sell the island, one of the companies they turned to was Cherokee. And they were in discussions with Cherokee as a potential buyer. But in 2003, they discovered a nesting pair of bald eagles on the island. Um, 
which was a first for Camden County. Eagles are a protected species under the New Jersey in, uh, Endangered Species Law. And when you have bald eagles nesting in a place, it's entitled to a certain level of protection with a perimeter around the nest. Uh, so when the eagles started raising their young on Petty's Island, it made it a whole different ball game in terms of the development proposal. So the deal that we had on the table at the time was dead. So internally at Sitco, uh, we started to have the discussion about whether this was a parcel that would be a great candidate for inclusion in some of our environmental stewardship projects. And they decided that the right thing to do would be not to develop the island, but rather to offer it to uh, either the state of New Jersey or the federal government as a wildlife preserve. Unfortunately, politics being what they were in New Jersey at the time, uh, that was a much more difficult task than you would think it, it should be. Originally, the uh, head of the state's Department of Environmental Protection was excited by the idea, but he didn't know that things were going on in the background that were going to not make that possible. Turns out that the uh, township of Pensauken had other plans. So when they found out that Sitco and the, the uh, commissioner were negotiating this transfer, they decided to take action and mobilize their supporters. Uh, which included just about every elected official in southern New Jersey. In 2004, the township committee had been for probably about 15 years trying to find developers who were willing to work with them to um, redevelop the waterfront. So they had a vision and kept pushing and pushing and finally uh, there was interest from Cherokee who we know was uh, doing a lot of brownfield development in the nation and they wanted to do the whole swath. Well I think Pensauken like a lot of struggling urban townships and municipalities um, was very much in favor of the development. It was a huge rateable for Pensauken. It was a real coup to have some high-end development. We didn't have new young professionals moving in. We didn't have empty nesters moving in. The risks that we were having as far as the decline of Pensauken were real. And to have a waterfront and to have public access, restaurants, potentially housing, you know, there were a lot of benefits there for the community and, our, and tax rateables to sustain it. The biggest issue was losing the rateable of Sitco's ownership of the island. So at that time in 2004, that was $800,000 that we would lose each year. So in donating the island to the Natural Lands Trust, where does that rateable go? Totally gone. Cherokee had this whole kind of dual plan going on down here. They were looking at major development of the, both the waterfronts of Pensauken and Camden, the northern part of Camden, and Petty's Island being kind of the crown jewel of that whole project. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of, um, of regional development is that there comes with it an opportunity for the developers to use eminent domain in order to secure par parcels to be part of the redevelopment project. Penn Salkin had announced that if Sitco wasn't going to voluntarily sell them the island, they were going to seize it using the their local power of eminent domain. And New Jersey eventually became Cherokee's you know, biggest piece of their overall business pie. And so they smartly connected with all the right consultants, lawyers, lobbyists, PR people, people who had worked with or were still working with various levels of government. Um, they also were very smart about making donations to the right parties and politicians and so on. So all told, between the Cherokee partners and some of their uh, affiliates and uh, consultants that they had donated something like one and a half million dollars to various political entities and individuals. And I was told that this was just the tip of the iceberg.
We had some experience already with areas of contamination, uh, especially urban areas, uh, affecting eagles and causing um, accumulation of like PCBs and DDT in the eggs that cause the eggs to fail. So once we saw that they had failed in 2003, we made a plan to come in in 2004, and at the proper time, we actually took their egg and gave them a chick that, was, that had been hatched at another nest. And sure enough, the eagles adopted this, this new chick uh, that they put in, in the nest and as their own. At the same time, the company Cherokee that wanted to develop the island hired a bird expert, an avian expert, uh, to study the patterns of behavior of eagles on Petty's Island um, because they knew from past reports that that would limit how they could develop. The developer Cherokee hired a consultant to figure out how much disturbance the eagles could tolerate. And I think uh, it's fair to say that that consultant pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. By early June, uh, a baby eaglet was found lying on the service road. Broken tail, covered in maggots, dehydrated. The eaglet didn't even make it to the rescue center. It died on the way. That failure was one of the biggest tragedies for our eagle program. We had never before and have never since had an eagle chick lost that way to disturbance. That captured people's imaginations. That got people riled up and, and really angry. And that got people that may not have been worried about water quality or worried about an environmental justice, but they hear about the American bald eagle being threatened for a greedy developer. That got people engaged. That eaglet, as it turned out, even though it you know, was a sad sacrifice for uh, the bald eagle population, was really, I think, what saved this island. The trust meeting that was held in Camden, uh, where we uh, heard the proposal from Sitco to donate first a conservation easement, and then eventually after the island was cleaned up, title to the island to the trust. The vote was five to three, and everybody in the room started cheering because they thought that meant that the motion was approved and the donation was accepted. The vote was five in favor, but there were three votes against, and all three of those votes were cast by people who were employed by the state of New Jersey and had their position on the board by virtue of their office. And then I have to explain to the assembled crowd, none of the five voters were state officials and therefore the motion failed. That's why the gift got rejected. I was flabbergasted. I went, how could you vote against you know, a free gift of 400 acres open space when the state is spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to acquire open space? Six environmental groups marked Earth Week today by blasting the Corzine administration for failing to accept the donation of Petty's Island. I think it's fair to say that the local activists we're quite shocked at the state's reaction to this proposed donation. And here is Petty's Island as a free donation to the state, and the administration was in fact instructing its representatives on the trust to refuse to accept the donation. So there were allegations of pay to play and mischief behind the scenes. And that's what really got me started, and probably also the other people who eventually formed the Save Petty's Island Coalition. An unlikely coalition of an oil company and environmental groups. We just used that meeting as sort of a springboard to fight even harder, to fight the, uh, the battle at the local level, the approvals, the permits that were needed. The local environmentalists who were very active started doing things like tracking political contributions made by Cherokee and their attorneys and consultants uh, to people running for office and people in office and the battle lines were really drawn, and the trust was right smack in the middle of that. So then we decided we had to make this Saving the Island an issue in the gubernatorial campaign. And we realized that uh, the, this insidious power that, the, that Pensacola was proposing to use to seize the island from Sitco was also being used by Cherokee in Camden, where they were proposing to seize the homes 
of over 3,000 people, so about 1,000 homes, and they were gonna basically take two zip codes by eminent domain, level all the homes, not pay the people enough to certainly come back and live in the community they were raising or to relocate someplace else. And so to our eyes, the sort of the evil of developing Petty's Island was now magnified by the displacement of uh, low-income people and minorities in uh, Kramer Hill. So we decided to forge an alliance um, with those who were opposing the project uh, in Camden. The Cherokee plan was to remove an entire block area of the neighborhood from one end to the other. So that was approximately two and a half miles of housing just gone uh, for a golf course in one end of the neighborhood and a gated community at the other. While the organization and the entire neighborhood did not want to see Petty Island developed, uh, Petty's Island development was directly tied to the Kramer Hill redevelopment plan. Uh, it would have destroyed the very fabric of the community that's existed there. And so we invited the Republican candidate uh, named Doug Forrester to come to Petty's Island. We had a press conference on the bridge uh, with all the environmental groups standing around. Uh, so you have an oil company, uh, every major environmental group, and a Republican candidate for governor all arguing that the island should be preserved, that Cherokee should be stopped, that what they're doing here in Kramer Hill and in Pensalkin is a classic example of pay-to-play, uh, corrupt uh, politics. It, once it became more of a kind of political football, because then we had the, uh, the next round of governor's races coming along, it was part of the sort of political discussion and uh, the opponents were using it as a sort of tool in their you know, arsenal against the incumbents. In addition to being indicted uh, by the state for violating the Threatened and Endangered Species Act, the company was having cost overruns that they never anticipated. It was all a house of cards. And it wasn't until um, that became apparent that the whole Cherokee enterprise started to come unraveled. Everything got so dragged out that we went from basically 2004 or five when it looked like it might happen to a couple years of just slow death. The development was no longer feasible, and in fact, the developer declared bankruptcy. And then we had the housing bust. So suddenly, Cherokee didn't really want to be building 6,000 houses in Camden, 2,600 houses in Pensauken. Cherokee wrote to officials in Pensauken and said, we can't go forward with our project. We approached Sitco again, they asked if the offer was still open, apologized for it taking so long, and the trust voted to accept a donation at that point. This was 2009. We were blessed to have a number of groups that typically you would find on the opposite side of an issue or the table from a major oil company. It was an improbable coalition winning an improbable victory, almost. David versus Goliath. We just keep fighting on these projects. We, we pretty much never give up. I think the Natural Lands Trust vision for the island is that it can be a true urban nature preserve, uh, where the principal focus is allowing people in a controlled basis to enjoy nature. So we're planning on building a nature center there, and the Nature Center will probably be at the old marine terminal that's used by Crowley, uh, which sticks out into the Delaware River. Fantastic views of the Philadelphia skyline, and it's surrounded by the rest of the island uh, that will be transformed into a completely natural setting. Of course, the island first has to be cleaned up. There's groundwater and surface water and wetlands contamination still on the island. And once that's cleaned up, the, the large asphalt parking lots that are here today will be removed and uh, a forest will, will be planted in its place. The huge orange oil storage tanks will be removed, that area will be clean. It'll be planted as a huge meadow. Some have asked, why would you put a nature preserve in an urbanized 
area? And of course, the answer is because there isn't much open space left. But I think more importantly, um, it's an environmental justice uh, issue in that it will provide recreation and educational opportunity for communities that live adjacent to the island in, uh, in Camden and in Pensacola and in South Jersey. When you look at how we've made public policy decisions in New Jersey and pretty much elsewhere, these urban areas, particularly Camden, have gotten more than their fair share of facilities that nobody else wants to live next to. Things like prisons, things like cement plants, incinerators, um, and you know what? Fair is fair. Uh, there should be some benefits uh, for a Camden. Petty's Island could be an incredible amenity for school children, for families, and frankly for redevelopment um, in that area as an amenity that will attract development. I don't believe that everybody who uh, has an interest in Petty's Island's um, future, you know, we can agree on everything, but we can agree on a lot. And so we need to find those areas and, and work together for those uh, best results. I think for many years, Petty's Island has been sort of used and abused. So I think it's, it's right that it's finally come full circle and it's gonna go back to the natural uh, habitat that it once was. Uh, once restored, this is gonna provide not only the open space for people to enjoy, but it'll provide habitat for a plethora of new uh, uh, and additional species. It's about people, it's about place, it's about water, it's about, it's about land. And, uh, and we all care about that. So we need to be able to, we can find the way to get there. It's a, it's a huge victory and it, you know, we need victories so that they can spur the next victory for the next challenge. It's more than worth it when you get to walk down the trail with a group of students who live a mile away from here, but who have never seen a live white-tailed deer, who have never seen a bald eagle. And to see that look in their face is something special. Was all the hard work in preserving Petty's Island worth it? Absolutely, it would do everything the same 10 times over. It's gonna be a great urban park.